Welcome back to Camerail Golf and Wellness. I'm on my way to meet Desiree Marin, who is a sustainability expert and advisor and is helping Camerail with its Green Root strategic plan. And I'm going to be meeting Desiree at the water treatment facility here at Camerail. the wastewater treatment plant at Camiral. In here, the wastewater treatment from the hotel, the houses and the resort, it's treated to uh, its quality to be improved enough to be reused again for irrigation so that the resort doesn't need for fresh water resources. And how important is it to improve the quality of that water? You can't just put wastewater on the golf course. You have to invest in this technology to make the water good enough for irrigation. That's it. So we need a tertiary treatment that uh, goes a step further in the water quality uh, improvement so that this water is safe enough to be reused for uh, irrigation purposes, for example. One might think that uh, the uh, uh, sources that they use for uh, irrigation uh, are coming from fresh water, but in here they are using uh, rainwater that is being harvested in reservoirs and they also use this kind of uh, wastewater treated, treated water uh, that has been improved uh, for the usage in uh, irrigation purposes. It's quite interesting that uh, Camiral, for example, started a process of transforming uh, their grass for the water efficiency improvement so they don't need any more water than uh, it's supposed to be needed. In a region that has experienced drought, I asked Desiree how important it was for Camaral's golf courses to have a sustainable source of water. As we are in a really water scarce territory, so wastewater reuse is a, a really key uh, for uh, keeping our fresh water uh, available for other uses while we use this uh, kind of water that it fits completely uh, the quality that it's needed for uh, irrigation. Before leaving the wastewater treatment facility, a distinctive bird song caught my ear. Nightingales are rare in some parts of Europe, so it was music to my ears, much to the amusement of resort CEO David Planner, who explained nightingales are common in Catalonia. So I don't know if you can hear that, but we've just come down to the wastewater plant, the recycling facility, and lo and behold, right by here is a nightingale singing. David, here we are by the wastewater treatment plant. There's a nightingale singing just over there. Yeah, why you are so surprised? <laughs> why, Gary? <laughs> well, he's, it's very common here. It's, it's um, a species that comes every spring here and it stays here for the reproduction season, and then goes back to the north of Africa, Egypt. So it's magic. Every year they come, they stay here for three, four months, they go back but it's everywhere, you will hear it here, in everywhere. It's just a beautiful song, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And you know that they sing night and day, all the, all the day around? Well, in the UK, I'm sad to say, we don't, we don't hear so many of them these days. Next, Desiree showed me a pond where the treated water is returned to the ecosystem, supporting plants and wildlife, and from where it can be pumped around the courses to supply irrigation. Then we sat down to talk about the Green Route, the strategic sustainability plan Desiree produced for Camaral. We have been collaborating with uh, Camiral in developing a sustainability strategy that includes not only the, the actions that they were already doing, but we help them to go a step further and to include new perspectives and new metrics about sustainability. So for example, including carbon footprint, water footprint, uh, also circular economy principles, and also this concept on how to expand uh, best practices uh, all along the value chain. How important is it to have a plan like this? A lot of places might look at individual projects, but this is being brought together under one vision, one plan, with lots of data involved and lots of projects that all work together in unison. Yeah, so that was the intended job. So try to 
uh, structure a little bit and also to reinforce their commitment to sustainability to bring together all the different projects that they were already carrying out, but to give them a common framework and also a governance structure. How important was the data? Gathering data at the start to find out exactly what, what's here. Did you have good data to work with? For example, on biodiversity, they did such an amazing job, like listing all the species living here at the, at the Cameral, for example. And we also have been doing a work of collecting some other data, for example, related to their value chain, suppliers, etc., to, uh, yeah, to get a sense on uh, which is the baseline for uh, many of the metrics that we established. Is this the first time you've worked with a golf course? And if so, what was your impression of golf and golf and the environment before you came here and what have you learned? This is the first time I, I, I'm working uh, with a golf course. They did a lot of different initiatives already. Nowadays there's a lot of pressure on uh, uh, economic activity sectors uh, on uh, communicating about sustainability. And there's a need of doing a proper job on getting the data, a plan that reflects the commitment of the company with sustainability. I, I guess a business can't afford not to have a plan like this though because if you want to go forward um, this is about the freedom to operate as, as a business you know not only might you want to do it but it's absolutely necessary to to have. In regions where we are facing for example climate change effects such as in here so with uh, water shortages and uh, uh, heat waves, etc. So there's the need for also companies to be prepared to sustain their economic activity based on the sustainability performance and their uh, ability to, to adapt to those changes. And that's the true value of sustainability or the true meaning of sustainability is more than just the environment. It's being able to live in a compatible way with nature, but it's also about jobs, economy and people and health and well-being and, and this is a place to live as well. That's it. So when, when we address sustainability, we talk about the ESG, so the environment, the society and also the social part and also the governance. It involves not just looking at the uh, environment but also on the social and how is the company operating, so that means governance. It was really interesting speaking to Desiree and understanding the level of science and detail that has gone into the Green Route, the strategic plan that's now really being used at the heart of the business here. And it's a great example of really what sustainability is. It's all about the balance of people, planet and profit. It's essential to the future of the business, but it's also essential to the future of the people who live here, who come and stay here. And it's also about the environment. It's about the quality and health of the the ecosystems and the wildlife that surround us here. Next time I'll be walking the course with ecologist Dr Jesus Ortiz and learning about the surprising rare species who have made their home at Camaral. This is a perfect place because of the habitat itself. We have found very rare species. I'll also be talking sustainable golf tourism with director of golf Flavio Papa. They are moving here just because how relaxing is this place. The Ryder Cup for us is going to be the perfect opportunity to showcase how we are making more sustainable golf. 